Hello everyone, this is Councilmember Mitch O'Farrell and I am so honored and privileged to represent the 13th District on the Los Angeles City Council. Uh, this is our 61st Council Member in Your Corner, which is uh, an outreach initiative that we first started back in July of 2013, the first month of my first term in office. And every month we make the rounds in a select community or neighborhood in the 13th District and distribute information. And I knock on doors personally with a whole team of volunteers and my staff uh, to just inform constituents of the services that are available to them. This council member in your corner was born from my very first campaign when I spent the better part of a year uh, getting to know constituents better uh, when I was asking for something from them and that was to support me uh, as their future council member. So uh, that ingrained in me a belief that the way I could give back after earning this position and earning their trust was to provide information to them on all of the services that are available uh, that the city offers someone and services such as um, bulky item pickup or if a stop sign is damaged or down or if you're having other issues with sanitation or uh, trash service um, or you need you see trees that need to be trimmed or you have an issue that is uh, special to you that my office can work on on your behalf such as a traffic issue. Now these council member in your corners over the last seven years have resulted in all sorts of really wonderful things because constituents have gotten directly involved on issues that are important to them where, where you live, such as always stop signs. Even traffic signals have come out of knocking on a person's door and them highlighting to me and my team something that was important to them and it can be about anything. So from these council members in your corner, we take constituent concerns, we open a case, and then we get to work on helping and assisting constituents on matters that are important to them where they live. So as I mentioned, this is the 61st one, and we've taken them virtual because of the pandemic of COVID-19. And we'll do these until we can go knocking on door to door safely again. And of course, that's what we all we are very eager to return to, and that is in-person, face-to-face meetings. But for now, these virtual council member in your corners will have to do. I want to acknowledge so many folks who are participating today. First of all, you, the constituents um, who are logged in and part of this virtual conversation today, and you're offering some questions that I'm going to get to in a moment. I want to thank Adele Hadjikalil of our Bureau of Street Services, uh, who has been working so diligently, his, uh, uh, his department in Silver Lake, and we're about to go over some of those, uh, those uh, improvements as well. Uh, we hope to have uh, Tacey from Sunset Free Clinic. We're trying to get her on. She's having some trouble logging on. But another partner, the Sunset Free Clinic there on Sunset Boulevard, that we work hand in hand with all the time, uh, and they do so much great work. And also on this uh, town, this virtual um, Zoom council member in your corner. We have my district director, Marisol Rodriguez, uh, and then Mary Rodriguez, my amazing Silver Lake deputy, uh, two fine public servants from my own team who are, are on board today as well. Uh, so let me get right down to some of the things we're going to update you on. First of all, I'm going to give you a recap of the Silver Lake Reservoir Complex. Now, there have been so many uh, safety and pedestrian improvements and many more on the way. In fact, a complete reimagining of what this no longer potable water reservoir uh, can offer the community. Um, so, so what we, what I want to acknowledge uh, about that to start with is that there have been upwards of a thousand people in Silver Lake who have been participating in this master plan process. So I thank all of you for giving your incredibly great input. Uh, the picture you see now is a walk that we did a couple of years ago that I'm going to get to in a second. Uh, the reservoir itself, in an effort to comply with federal and state regulations, LADWP, our own Department of Water and Power, constructed a new buried uh, water storage facility in Griffith Park. That's called Headworks. Now, that then took the reservoir offline for potable water, it, which enabled us to take both Ivanhoe 
and Silver Lake Reservoirs offline, which started in 2017, no longer being used as uh, drinking water. So in March of 2018, City Council approved a memorandum of agreement between the LADWP and the Bureau of Engineering to begin the Silver Lake Rest of, uh, Reservoir Complex Master Plan. The goal, repurpose the majority of the reservoir complex for natural open space and recreation while keeping the property necessary for DWP to maintain the historic water levels of the dams and properly aerate and recirculate the water. In other words, we don't lose the beautiful view of the water. That stays even during the master planning process. The Bureau of Engineering worked with a community to find the best design team, reaching out internationally and awarding Hargraves and Associates. Something else important to mention here is that we worked with LADWP and convinced them to fund the master plan process itself. That was not part of something they were originally going to do, so I want to thank DWP for funding the master plan process. A stakeholder working group was formed to meet bi-monthly with Hargreaves in, uh, in Engineering to serve as a sounding board for the project. Here are those involved. Silver Lake Neighborhood Council, Silver Lake Reservoir Conservancy, Silver Lake Forward, Silver Lake Now, Silver Lake Wildlife Sanctuary, and anyone else who wanted to participate. In addition to the stakeholder group meetings, several large community meetings that anyone could participate in have been held to keep everyone involved in the know. This included a walk inside the perimeter fence on January 23rd, uh, giving people a chance to get closer to the water. It was a beautiful event. We're now in the final stage with a virtual community meeting coming up tomorrow, Friday, August 21st, again virtual, 5 o'clock p.m., which will provide a final online questionnaire and allow input on next steps and preferred projects. And I have to take another moment here to thank the Silver Lake Reservoirs Conservancy for doing a questionnaire originally that had thousands of responses that has really helped give input to what people want to see here. So we'll do another questionnaire uh, that is even more far reaching. Uh, the online questionnaire that I just mentioned will uh, continue until September 4th. Now, this picture is the South Dam Walkway Grand Opening. February 10th, uh, two years ago, I was proud to host the grand opening of the South Dam Walkway. It provides a fantastic view of the mountains as well as the sky reflected in the reservoir water. Over 600 people attended this exciting event. Again, we partnered with LADWP to provide this open access daily from 6 uh, a.m. to 6 p.m. Uh, some of the safety improvements. On February 10th of 2019, we worked with LADW, uh, LADOT and installed a new pedestrian activated signal. This is actually the, the slide you have here is actually when we opened the South Dam. So enjoy that, it's, it's, that's great. It's with uh, uh, my, my friend, um, assembly member, uh, Laura Friedman and her daughter. And it was, and Tom LaBonge is in that frame as well. And uh, hundreds, nearly a thousand people on that beautiful day. Um, so, uh, so the open access piece, um, so uh, jumping to the activated signal, we worked with LED, LEDOT and installed a new pedestrian activa activated signal at the corner of Silver Lake Boulevard and Van Pelt where the recreation center is located. And that's a picture of this. It's helpful for all, especially families with children, to safely access one of our great park facilities. And anyone who knows this part of Silver Lake knows that it's a down slope careening curve. So uh, we need to do all we can to make pedestrians safer everywhere. In fact, that is my number one transit priority is safe pedestrian access anywhere in the district. We continue to work with LADOT to implement safety measures along Silver Lake Boulevard, including the upcoming installations of speed feedback signs, curve warning signs, edge lines, repainted bike lanes, and modifying the traffic signal at Effie Street. We have more issues and we're going to address them. Uh, next, I'd like to turn to Descanso Drive Reconstruction and Landscaped Median Project. This was done in partnership with the Bureau of Engineering. We completed a major residential infrastructure project in July of 2019. And the stories that created this project, we could write a book about. 
I really have to hand it to Mary Rodriguez and Marisol Rodriguez for being the driving force in rebuilding entirely this public right-of-way. My office held a number of community meetings with the immediate neighborhood, which included 75 properties and hundreds of residents, to determine how we could address the many issues that were arising due to the narrow, curved, and extremely damaged hillside roadway. It was a failed street, and anyone in Silver Lake who drove it knows what I'm talking about. Uh, the issues were decades of de deterioration due to large camphor trees that had reached their lifespan and were dying off, branches breaking, threatening liability, uh, their root system damaging vehicles, undercarriages, harming bicyclists, attempting to navigate the damaged roadway, etc. And some of those branches fell on top of cars and either damaged or destroyed them. So they were dangerous. My office secured a capital improvement funding of $3 million to completely remove and reconstruct the upper and lower roadways, curbs, gutters, sidewalk, install a retaining wall, a new median, irrigation, 30 plus new trees, hundreds of drought tolerant plants, and a decorative ornamental street lighting system. So one more time, thank you engineering, Bureau of Street Lighting, thank you to the residents of Desconso for your patience, your advocacy, your fantastic ideas, and your involvement, and then Mary and Marisol for making this project happen. Um, many residents lost access to, to drive up to their homes during the months of construction, and it was a really heavy rain year as well. So when I say that the constituents there really uh, endured a lot and were patient, that's an understatement. Uh, so again, thanking the fire department, our contractor, Environmental Construction, Inc., DWP once more, uh, and, uh, uh, and others. Um, in February of 2018, we planted 29 trees along West Silver Lake Drive with the Los Angeles Beautification Team and City Plants. The trees are maintained and watered by our CD13 Clean Team, and Mary and I were out there helping to plant them. And let me tell you, that ground is as hard as cement, but our teams broke through it. The trees are doing well. Uh, and um, we also want to thank Jane Hook, Hugh Kenny, and others who are residents that we partnered with to make this happen. They're two years in the ground and they're doing very well. If you've walked or jogged past it like I have, you'll know what I mean. Already providing some shade along the pathway uh, during this heat we're having, very important. Um, these projects and other initiatives are among the many ways my office is working to make a difference in Silver Lake. Of course, these projects are complemented by the efforts of my Los Angeles Conservation Corps clean team, seen in the orange vest there, and our community organizer, Sylvan de la Cruz, who manages the clean teams. Uh, next, I wanna talk a little bit about small businesses during COVID. Uh, I wanna be sure that our small business owners in Silver Lake and across uh, the business community have access to a $5,000 grant to help pay bills during the pandemic. Uh, for more information, please log on to my website at cd13.com. Now, what this is, is it's a $1 million set aside because at the beginning of the pandemic in March, we reprioritized everything in my district in terms of spending and discretionary money. And we transferred money from, from uh, uh, accounts that have gone toward infrastructure and beautification improvements to actually dispersing funds to keep people housed, keep businesses operating, and keep food on the table. One of those reprioritizations was my $1 million small business subsidy. And so we're gonna be able to help small businesses that have been struggling through COVID-19 with $5,000 grants. And it may just be enough for some of them to get through this. It's been a catastrophe for our small business community. And just yesterday on the COVID-19 ad hoc committee, which I'm part of, we approved another small business subsidy program for the entire city of Los Angeles. So that'll be moving through council. And we're actually, it'll be a way to expand what I've done in the 13th district to help small businesses. Next, I wanna talk about uh, our council district 13 clean team and our beautification project that we completed earlier today. Now, let me tell you a little bit about the clean team and what they do. They do nearly 900 large and small improvement projects across the 13th district every year. That was a priority of mine my first year in office. 
And so that is ongoing. And we just did one in Silver Lake. You saw the before and after um, right there at the Music Box Steps in Silver Lake, where the annual Laurel and Hardy Festival is held. And uh, hopefully, you never know, by October, maybe we'll be able to you know, get out there and celebrate again. But if not, we'll certainly celebrate it virtually again. Uh, they also completed a cleanup of the north end of the Vendome Street medium adjacent to the Laurel and Hardy Park, which you saw. And there's my clean team standing on the music box steps after a job well done. So thank you, clean team. All right, and a reminder, after I'm done and we hear all these uh, presentations, we're going to take some questions from you. Uh, my office partners with and empowers several community organizations throughout Council District 13 and in Silver Lake, uh, including the Sunset Free Clinic. So I have a feeling we don't have Tacey Padua. I have a feeling she wasn't able to log on because I do not see her. But she was trying. So uh, we'll, we'll bring her aboard another time. Uh, but uh, Tacey is our friend. She is a beloved community partner in Silver Lake that everyone knows. Uh, Sunset Free Clinic has helped countless people in the Silver Lake area and beyond for several decades now. So I can't thank Executive Director Tacey Padua enough. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Marisol and or Mary to talk a little bit about what the Sunset Free Clinic does since Tacey wasn't able to join us at the last minute. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, yes, unfortunately, Tacey was not able to join us. However, uh, our office is very familiar with all the services that the Hollywood Sunset Free Clinic provides. They are located at the intersection of Sunset Boulevard and Mitchell Terena, and they have been serving the community since 1968, celebrating 51 years of service. Uh, it's just an incredible organization uh, for the community where people can go and get free health care, uh, and they turn away no one. Um, they're open every single day uh, except Sunday, and if they are not able to provide a service, they can refer out or get individuals the help they need. They truly are a gem in the Silver Lake community and serving beyond um, into many, many residents of the 13th district. Uh, some of the services that are um, can be found at the uh, clinic are for uh, both children, adults, seniors, uh, include general medical exams, um, education, uh, treatments, physical therapy, EKGs for, you know, to monitor heart, your heart health. Uh, it is uh, uh, just an array of services. We're very fortunate to have them. They do uh, have specializations uh, in pediatrics for children with immunizations, uh, vision screenings, hearing screenings, uh, physical exams, um, and also for young adults and, and teenagers um, offering the same services. They have STD screenings, um, uh, referrals, mammogram screenings, uh, cancer um, screenings. Ready? So, on that note of STDs, I want to uh, reiterate what I've heard Casey, uh, Tacey say at numerous um, Silver Lake Neighborhood Council meetings is that STD cases are on the rise and they're not getting the attention that they deserve. So, please utilize this clinic. Thanks, Mary. Thank Thank you, Mary. Yes, so they do offer an array of services that we're very fortunate to have. They also have counseling services available for folks that might be in need. Currently, as we're ex experiencing this uh, pandemic, it can be very traumatic for folks. So utilize this amazing service so that if you're experiencing trauma or are in need of counseling services, um, the clinic is there to help you or direct you to uh, someone who can. Um, they also have other specialized services, such as acupuncture, um, that are available on a weekly basis by appointment. And so uh, they have um, several different languages that, uh, that can help many, many folks. Um, if, you're not, if English is not your first language, please don't be afraid to come into the clinic and ask for help. It is there. It is a resource. Um, they accept Medi-Cal and uh, just we've always had a wonderful partnership and encourage everyone to utilize the Hollywood Sunset Free Clinic. Thank you, Marisol, and thank you, Mary. I, I just want to say that we have been close partners with Sunset Free Clinic since the beginning, including to help underwrite some of their programs. And you can assist as well. I encourage you to contact 
Sunset Free Clinic, uh, and um, you can assist them. Let me just leave it at that, and I encourage you to assist them with the services that they dispense for free on behalf of the community. We're also partnering with them on food distribution. Uh, the last time I saw Tacey in person, in fact, during this uh, time that we're having, was when Mary and I went and walked with Tacey to deliver food uh, in, in a partnership role because uh, we, we know that there's a lot of food insecurity during COVID-19. So you can help them in so many ways. Uh, thank you, Tacey. If you're listening, uh, we appreciate all the work you do. Uh, you're a true hero in Silver Lake, and we love you dearly. And I think everyone who knows you feels the same way. Um, next, I'd like to introduce another champion for all of you that you've never even necessarily met. Our good friend, another partner of ours across the 13th District and across the city, someone I've known for so many years now, and talk about the right person for the job at the right time. It's none other than our general manager of Streets LA, Adele Haja Khalil, who has joined us to talk about some of the work in Silver Lake. Adele, please take it away. And make sure you unmute. Uh, yeah, I'm already. Thank you, Councilman. Thank you very much uh, uh, for the introduction and thank you for your leadership. Uh, you know, Councilman O'Farrell is one that I've worked with him when he was a, a working uh, at the community level. Uh, he still continued to work for the community, walk in the streets, and I'm just so impressed. And I think the community in CD13 is lucky to have you in their corner. So, uh, you know, as the councilman is in your corner, uh, 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 the hardworking men and women of Streets LA are in your corner every day, rain or shine, day or night, making our streets safe, mobile, and sustainable while enhancing the quality of life uh, for all. Uh, you know, I just completed my second year at Streets LA. I've been with the city over 31 years, and, and really my whole goal is to make the city a better place to live, to work, to enjoy. Uh, when the mayor, uh, Mayor Garcetti, appointed me, uh, we worked, we talked about really leading Streets LA into the future by enhancing delivery of basic services. Uh, to all Angelinos while providing innovative, integrated, and holistic solutions that can protect the public health and safety and mitigate the impacts of changes. Safe safety is the number one. I heard the councilman talk about that making our states safe. Uh, and, and, and I want to report to you that we are we connect people. Our work is not just about paving streets, fixing sidewalks, or planting uh, trees. It's about sustainable communities. I'm excited to share with you that, that we're working hard across our city, looking at new and new innovative uh, programs. And I want to share with you that our achievements we did last year in CD30, but uh, specifically in the Silver Lake area. It has been record-breaking year last year in Four Streets LA. We took on new programs and new efforts that haven't been done in a long time. I'm so proud of the work that our staff is doing and they haven't stopped one day during the pandemic. Uh, they have not stopped working and serving you. Uh, they are working every day, fixing streets, fixing sidewalks, trimming trees, planting trees, uh, building integrated solutions, fixing sidewalks. Uh, doesn't matter what it is, we are there uh, serving you and making the city a safer place to live. We're transforming LA streets into world-class network and we have resurfaced really record number of miles. This data to help us look at where are the streets that are in need of help, how we can reduce safety, but reduce liability for the city. And, and, and this year, from the work we're doing from the streets, sidewalks, and from uh, all the efforts that we have done, we estimate that we have saved the city $335 million in liability reduction. That's a huge number uh, that we are able to invest uh, programs that are saving us and making our streets safe. I want to talk to you about a couple of things that we're doing. During the pandemic, uh, we actually had to reshift while our residents were staying safer at home and we had the relaxed uh, parking enforcement. We actually uh, wanted to look at opportunities to pave streets that we never were able to pave because of traffic. And we shifted. We had an adapt program that we adapted to this change. And we actually did not want to uh, disturb our residents, but also we wanted to address streets that are critical. 
and we did that. Under the ADAPT program, we were able to fix Sunset Boulevard. Can you show the picture of Sunset Boulevard and the paving? We paved about five miles from Michel Torona to Fountain Avenue, which was repaired under our uh, ADAPT program. And, and, and this is an amazing effort that we have done. We've done about six major streets in your district and alley, and we're doing that. But I wanna, one of the biggest things that I wanted to address, and with the help of the councilman and the mayor and city council, we were able to start investing in failed streets, streets that are unsafe that we have just walked away from. And this year, for the first time, we actually addressed concrete streets. And many of you have told us that you wanted those streets addressed. We invested in resources, and we were able to come up with ideas that it doesn't have to cost a huge amount of failed streets. We can repair uh, panels, and we can give you something that's good. Uh, let me show you the picture of example of West Lake Drive that we've done. We've done about a number of streets in your, in your community that shows the condition before. It's unsafe. Quickly come in and surgically remove the broken panel and replace it. The street looks as good as new. We did that at Hidalgo Avenue, Effie Street. We lost you for uh, a second there, Adele. You're back. About 11,000 square feet of concrete streets. You know, we, we Hidalgo is one, Effie Street is one, Fanning is one. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's something that we're very proud of the work we're doing. We, uh, we paved Clever Street, Effie Street, Griffith Park Boulevard, Sunset, Swan. We had an alley next to Edgemont. And, and all these things are being done as part of improving the quality of life. And those are surgically chosen streets, working with the councilmen, with the community to make sure we're not only making the streets safer, more mobile. So we're partnering with our partners in LEDOT, Metro, trying to find ways to really provide a mobile and sustainable streets. Street sweeping. Street sweeping is another program I've been talking to Councilman O'Farrell about for a long time. And it's important. We only sweep as part of posted routes about you know, 40% of the city. And, and those are uh, streets that are mainly in residential streets. We have not expanded the, pay, the, the sweeping program. And we know trash builds up and, and that's part of, quality, part of in, environmental quality. During the COVID, we were able to shift. We continue to sweep streets, but we went to commercial corridors that haven't been a long time. We were able to sweep and address a lot of these locations. Uh, just between April and June, we did about 10,000 lane miles of, of sweeping and commercial corridors and, uh, and removed about 5,000 cubic yards of debris. The vision and street sweeping to hit every street in the city and how we can make the curb available. So we're thinking that maybe reduce the frequency where we pay when we sweep a street but take that resources and use it in the same community, but expand the sweeping that we're doing where it's needed. That effort is underway. We're looking through a process to provide a holistic coverage of the entire city, especially areas that have high trash uh, pickup, but every street will be swept. We wanna also create, provide you the transparent information where you know when is your street sweeper coming Imagine if you have an app in your hand that you can look at it and say, what is my sweeper? We can tell you so you can park as long as you want and just remove the car just in time. That information is critical that must really better serve you and make the curb available to you as our residents and to the businesses. We are doing more. We are uh, you know, applying cool pavement that we're trying to expand this across the city. We're planting more trees and providing holistic solutions that can enhance the city providing shade because really it's it's a huge effort during the sweeping of our major streets las Feliz was uh, swept riverside Hyperion, glendale boulevard and we picked a mar huge amount of trash the future is bright we've done so much but you know uh you know we we were continued to serve you our residents every single day our staff life and livelihood at risk just to continue providing because we believe serving our community provides hope uh, and we are really continuing to look for ways to better support you we work hard 
to reopen our farmers markets by providing our staff continue to serve as disaster service workers during the pandemic, helping sheltering the homeless, delivering food to seniors. Our staff are out in the field supporting our vending community and providing inspection of businesses. We are here to serve you, but I'm so proud of our partnership with Councilman O'Farrell, who really stands in your corner every day. He's a person that a, a person that cares for the community, echoes what you want, listens to what you need, and really communicates to us how we need to continue serving you. We're so proud of serving Silver Lake. We're so proud of serving the 13th district. I, we are proud of serving every community in LA. We want to be across the city. We're going to be working on a tree inventory. We started the process. 10 communities have been inventoried. We're going to have a transparent uh, inventory of trees. And our goal is to make that happen. So I want to thank you, Councilman, for this opportunity. I'm, I'm here for answering any of your questions. And this is a great honor. Thank you. Adele, thank you so much. Um, it is a partnership, and, and I'm glad that you're able to talk a little, little bit about what Streets LA does because um, our Streets LA, our Department of Transportation, um, are some of the fundamental departments that directly affect the quality of life for Angelinos that a lot of us don't necessarily reflect upon or maybe it's not present of mind but without adequate sidewalks and streets and uh, ADA ramps and safe crosswalks and you know the bump outs that slow down traffic, et cetera, then our quality of life and our mobility is greatly diminished. And my, my big, uh, I think, initiative on transportation, of course, is safe accessibility for pedestrians and bicyclists and motorists so that we can all kind of uh, you know, navigate through the public sphere safely. Um, a couple of stories of, about Adele, I, I just gotta share. So uh, I have been going to the League of Cities or the City Summit every year because I'm a real nerd in terms of how, how cities can work better. So I like hearing best practices and going to the panels and hear what other cities are doing. So Adele attended one uh, two years ago as well and he wanted to meet with me while in DC to talk about the 13th district. And I wanted to talk to him as well because there was a street near the hotel that was using uh, uh, what I felt was a newer sort of engineering way uh, that protected heritage trees from having to be removed uh, to reduce the heat island effect with an innovative new way of doing a sidewalk around the tree that was uh, more flexible and uh, permeable. So Adele and I put our heads together a lot on things like that because we're interested in the same thing. He talked a lot about trees. We've talked about reducing the heat island effect through the cool pavement system and how I want one of the cool pavement boulevards that uh, Streets LA does somewhere in the 13th district because uh, that reduces heat in the double digits of degrees. And when we're undergoing a heat wave like we are now, we all really understand how important that is to cool the environment uh, and how healthy that is for all of us. So uh, I want to thank Adele for his sort of partnership uh, in, in being a thought partner as well and how we can look at the public right of way in terms of the environment and, and reducing our carbon emissions and enhancing the quality of life through the public uh, infrastructure improvements. So thank you so much, Adele, for that. Um, I want to thank everyone for joining us today. Um, but before we close, we're going to take some questions. Uh, and uh, we can start that portion right now. So uh, let's take some questions. Council member, a constituent wants to know, when will the mask and social distancing measures be lifted for Angelinos? OK. Um, the mask and social distancing issue, uh, the requirement lifted for Angelinos. Um, we've all heard this, like a broken record time and again, that masking prevents COVID-19. So we're still in the emergency order. It has not been lifted. We don't know yet when it's going to be lifted, but I have such mad respect for Dr. Barbara Ferrer of County Public Health uh, that I listen to her every day. Uh, and we have to pay close attention to the trends, the contact tracing ability, and the... Um, 
the infection rates. As, as when they hit a certain point, we can start relaxing uh, uh, the emergency orders a little more. I do not have the answer for you, but let me just reiterate the importance of masking, um, how it not only protects you, because studies show that it will protect you as well if you wear the right kind of mask, but it protects those others who are the most vulnerable that you may not have direct contact with in being out in public. And that is the likelihood of someone who isn't in the high risk category with underlying conditions infecting someone who is, being a non-ill um, uh, non COVID carrier, but yet you're, the disease is transmissible through you. So um, until we hear, get that order from Dr. Ferrer and we lift the emergency order entirely, please mask up anytime you go outside your house. Council member, Katrina from Silver Lake writes, the recent attacks on trans women in Hollywood have shaken me to my core. What are you doing to help my community? So Katrina, first of all, thank you. Uh, as a member of the LGBTQ community myself, when I saw this video and it came to my attention early uh, Tuesday morning, my team had already been privy to it the evening before and we're already working directly with the Hollywood LAPD on the investigation. Um, very, very soon, we're gonna have an announcement about what that investigation uh, has resulted in. So stay tuned. Uh, what happened, folks, what Katrina is bringing up is a really grotesque, horrifying incident that was captured on an iPhone, but get this, by the perpetrator of the crime and his associates and then a crowd of onlookers for a good 10, 15 minutes of three transgendered women being assaulted, robbed, beaten on the streets of Hollywood early mo uh, Monday morning, the early morning hours. Um, so we are going to get a uh, resolution on this crime. We're gonna follow the case until there is complete resolution and we're gonna utilize this horrific crime to elevate the conversation of the importance of civil rights for everyone, especially our transgender community. So stay tuned for that update because it's coming very soon. Thanks, Katrina. This next question is a two-part question and it comes from Cody. Cody asks, what are you doing to address the houseless crisis in our district? And secondly, how does the city intend on preventing the newly improved Silver Lake Reservoir from becoming a large scale encampment? Thanks, Cody. Uh, let me start by saying that my belief is to get everyone who is experiencing homelessness under a roof, period. That is my ultimate goal. My team works literally seven days a week. I won't say 24 seven because people do have to sleep but every single day we have a powwow in my office about homelessness in the 13th district in the city of Los Angeles. So we have a district approach and a city approach. The district approach is get enough beds for everyone who's experiencing homelessness in the 13th district beyond uh, Judge Carter's order, beyond the lawsuits that have been filed. The main thing that people are rightfully demanding is get people housed. So that's what we're doing. In the meantime, we're putting out hygiene stations, mobile showers, storage lockers, staffed uh, uh, restrooms that are, remain, that are cleaned. At Echo Park Lake, we definitely have a unique situation that we're working daily to solve, but we are uh, uh, applying resources to help folks there, including keeping the restrooms at the north end of the lake open and secure 24 hours a day, keeping the water fountains working, mobile showers in Echo Park three days a week, uh, storage lockers, and working, and we're, we're, we're having some success with getting adequate housing for everyone who's experiencing homelessness there. In terms of the Silver Lake Reservoir Complex, what we need to do is bake in the reality that homelessness will be with us for a while until we can get all of the HHH units built, which we will, until we can get adequate temporary shelter, which we will, uh, and um, also until we can 
uh, really make sure that our outreach and uh, helpful approach to getting people well who have been homeless is successful. That's going to take work across all uh, parties and jurisdictions. The good news is that we have unprecedented cooperation and collaboration with our county counterparts, and we have more funding available than ever before, but it's up to you to make sure people like me make that funding work. So believe me, Cody, I get it. It's important. It's vital. It's a humanitarian crisis, and we're all involved. Um, lastly, I will say this. There, there is a major deficiency in the entire system, and that is how we deal with those who are suffering from mental health issues and addiction issues who are experiencing homelessness. That's something that I'm really laser focused on now. And uh, we have to help the most vulnerable among us. Uh, and I hope everyone understands that it's a complex, well, everyone does. It's a complex issue. Um, and I welcome everyone's constructive ideas on how we can improve what we're doing as we either improve or build a new system to really address this in a fundamental way, which in my experience hasn't ever fully been implemented. So stay engaged with us, Cody, and thank you for your question. Council member, Luis writes that several businesses along the Sunset Corridor have shuttered since the beginning of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. What is being done to help businesses stay open? Thanks, Luis. Uh, it's estimated that because of COVID-19, up to 60% of small businesses in general in the United States may be in danger of closing for good. We already know that a lot of food establishments, restaurants have closed for good. So early on, I set out being a former restaurateur myself and a restaurant manager back in the day, working in restaurants, understanding how restaurants work. I knew they would be in trouble really quick, especially when they had to close, especially when they had to either close or remain open in a limited way just for takeout or delivery. Um, knowing also going into it that the uh, delivery apps were already fleecing them uh, by charging 25, 30, even up to 40% for those delivery charges. So what do I do? I enact a delivery app cap, so no more than 15% can be charged for a delivery from a restaurant. My small business uh, grant program that is now expanding across the city, $5,000 in, in my $1 million distributed through the 13th only, but the, the, we're expanding it to include up to $15,000. So stay tuned for that. And then lastly, our collective efforts on the city council on the resolutions for the state and the feds to make sure that we have the HEROES Act for funding for small businesses, renters, and mortgage holders. So it's a, it's a huge, complicated uh, process, but I'm advocating locally, at the state, and at the federal level, and we're doing everything we can locally uh, to make sure that, that people get the kind of relief they need, and especially our small businesses employers. So thank you for that question as well. And I understand that's all the time. Let me just lastly say this. There's never enough time to answer questions on Facebook Live, but the ones you've submitted will be answered. And by the way, we don't need a council member in your corner to ask us questions. Please call us. Please contact my office. The best way to do it is to email us. Social media is an out of control kind of thing. So we don't always even see the questions or demands or whatever on social media because it's just all over the place. So please engage with us directly. We're available to do that with you. We encourage that. I wanna thank everyone for participating and the council members in your corner. I wanna thank Channel 35 for always graciously hosting these. It's wonderful. This is your channel, Angelinos. This, this is a service to you and we're happy to partner uh, with you and so Thank you for making that possible, Channel 35. And one great way to contact with us, uh, to make contact with us and get information is by logging on to my website, cd13.com, and subscribe to my uh, el electronic newsletter. Two, three times a week we publish one. Log on to my website, subscribe to my uh, newsletter, and we'll, we'll be in touch with you. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, Adele. Thank you, Tacey. Thank you for everyone involved. 
Uh, may God bless everyone in Silver Lake and beyond. Thank you.